All right. Let's get the ball rolling. It is Wednesday, May 11th. This is the Team Simply Beautiful call, and we are in for a real treat tonight. I'm so excited that Kathy um, has agreed to come on our call tonight. Um, she has been somebody, um, it's kind of funny, Kathy started a couple months after me, um, and she is somebody that I have been following um, religiously since she started, because when you talk about somebody who literally signed up and just decided to go ham with this business, like that's Kathy. Um, and Kathy, you might not notice that know, uh, know this, but whenever um, you, like the first year we were both coaching, I was like super intimidated by you because I was like, how is she doing that? <laughs> and I was just, I was trying to figure it all out. And then it just kind of like, whenever I heard your story for the first time, that was when my mind was like, oh my God, like I get it. Um, so I want to introduce her. We've gotten to meet each other a couple times in person now. Um, she's actually a lot taller in person than you'd think. <laughs> that was my biggest, that's the one thing I noticed about her. Um, but Kathy is a 2015 elite coach. Um, she is a 10 star diamond. I think you're two star in your spouse account too, right? Um, I might not. Am I still two star in the, <laughs> actually I am, Yeah. <laughs> So she's two star in her spouse account. Um, she has a uh, she's a success club ten all star, meaning she has hit success club ten twelve or more months. Um, she's a top fifty team this year. So out of four hundred thousand coaches, her team is ranked in the top fifty of the network. Um, she became a six figure earner in one year's time. Um, and I'm not going to say anymore because she's a really, really awesome story. Um, oh, but she is a full-time mom. So all the moms on this call or on this team, um, this, sh sorry, my mom. Um, also all the moms in this call, it's really important that you listen to this to see like, you can do this with a crazy schedule and with the kids and all this different stuff. So, um, Kathy, I'm just going to hand it over to you. Take it away and guys be ready to take lots of notes. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was a great introduction. I appreciate it. <laughs> I was cracking up the whole time. Yeah, so let me see. Just raise your hand if you're a mom on the call, just so I can see where all my moms are. Yeah, so you know how crazy it can be, right? <laughs> all right, so what I'm going to do tonight is I am going to, you know, I'm going to tell you my story, and I'm going to intertwine the things that I have done across my journey for the past 22 months um, that I did that I think will be really great tips for you guys and that will help you take your business to the next level and help you build a successful business with this. Um, so you're going to learn how I grew this thing so fast, you know, and how I was so successful in it. It's going to kind of all make sense as I tell you my story and just share what I do. And you're going to learn too, guys, that I'm literally no different than anybody on this call and that I'm just like you guys, and that I just basically mastered the three vital behaviors. It's as simple as that. That's really all that it is. So before I get started, I'll just tell you a little bit about myself. I'm a stay-at-home mom, like Kelsey said. So I have, right now, Landon is actually going to be four years old next month, and Kirsten is two years and four months old. So they're 18 and a half months apart, so it's pretty busy with them being close in age. Um, before being a stay-at-home mom, I was an elementary school teacher for eight years. I had my master's in special education. And then once I knew I was pregnant with Landon and I was about to have him, I handed in my paperwork, I resigned from my teaching career, and I became a stay-at-home mom because that's what I always wanted to do. You know, that was my dream was to be a stay-at-home mom. And me and Nick were always in agreement on that. You know, his mom raised him that way. My mom raised me and my brother and sister that way. And I just really wanted to do this. So like when I looked at how my life was going to be once I got married and had kids, I never pictured myself doing anything else but just being a stay-at-home mom. And that's what I wanted to do. So that's what I did. So we knew that things were going to be really tight because I was leaving a, you know, it was a pretty high-paying teacher job where I was teaching. And I had eight years under my belt with a master's degree. So we knew that was going to be kind of tough living off of one income, even though Nick has a really great job. So my husband was doing like all these side jobs, you know, he was doing like videography, photography, you know, I mean, website development, you name it, he was doing it. I was tutoring almost every night of the week just to try to get some extra money. And we were just totally sinking fast. We were literally drowning in 
in debt. It was so stressful. It was so overwhelming. Um, and we kept our heads in the sand for a long time, just ignoring it, hoping it was going to like magically get better. <laughs> um, and I was also 35 pounds heavier too. And back then, so I was 35 pounds heavier, had all this stuff going on. And then um, what happened was, is I want you guys to just kind of flash back. So I want you guys to just come back with me for a minute. Come back with me to when Kirsten was only four months old, guys, at the time. And Landon was 22 months old. And at this time, we had completely depleted our entire savings account because we were living off of one income. We had racked up $35,000 of credit card debt. Like I said, I was 35 pounds heavier. And that was when I was faced with the reality that being a stay-at-home mom was not going to happen. Nick pretty much said, you know, we can't swing this anymore. It is not going to happen. Like we are sinking. We were going into like a negative thousand dollars every month. It was so crazy. And that's where I was guys when this opportunity fell right into my lap. So, um, you know, as you can see, a four-month-old and a 22-month-old, I mean, they were little guys, and it was crazy, and it was so busy, and it was the busiest time of my life, and it still is the busiest time of my life, but I, I took a chance at it. Um, I actually didn't sign up, though, right away. To be honest, when I first heard about this, Kirsten was actually only one month old, <laughs> and we thought it was a scam, and Nick thought it was a total pyramid scheme, and that you couldn't earn any money with it, and so... We actually dragged our feet for three months until finally that's when Nick said, like, you're going to have to go back to your teaching career. And in my mind, I was like, hell no, I am not going back. I am not leaving these kids. I don't care if it kills me. I am not leaving the kids. Um, so that's where I was, guys. I had only 300 Facebook friends. I hardly ever used Facebook. You know, I knew nothing about this, knew nothing about running a business. I was just a first grade school teacher, just really wanting to make this work because I wanted to be at home with the kids. So I'm gonna tell you my five top non-negotiables now that I feel have really helped me build this into a successful business. And then I'm gonna talk about each one as I you know, go through my talk with you guys tonight. So my top five non-negotiables to have success in this business. So the first one is to be focused. So I never wasted any time. I'm going to go into like more about this later, but I never wasted any time doing other things. I literally spent all of my time talking to people. I never got wrapped up in side conversations. I never got wrapped up with like following other coaches and like, you know, trying to do what they were doing. I never tried to make videos. I never did any of that stuff that you might see other coaches doing. I literally just started talking to people. That's, that's what I did. And I was focused and I was disciplined with that every single day. Uh, the second one is to, like I just mentioned, be disciplined. So I was really disciplined. You know, you don't have a boss sitting down telling you like what to do, when to do it. Like you have people telling you what you should do, but at the, at the end of the day, it has to be up to you to sit down and actually take action every day. So I was very disciplined. The third one, your belief and confidence needs to be spot on. This one I feel is like one of the most important ones that you can have. So belief and confidence. The fourth one was that I did the three vital behaviors every single day. Literally guys, for the past 22 months, every single day, even if I had a crappy day, even if things were going wrong, I might not have, you know, might not have worked as hard as I would work previously when I was kind of feeling the groove and feeling good but I still did it every single day, no matter what. And the fifth, fifth one was, um, I would tell someone about this business opportunity, even if it was just one person, every single day. So because of my situation, guys, that I was in, right, I knew that I had to make this work. So I had to take it seriously, take it seriously and I had to treat it like a business. This could not be a hobby for me. This had to be a business for me. Um, and so... I was all in from day one. And that takes, it takes a lot of confidence, guys, really for this business to work. It really does. It boils down to having a lot of confidence. You know, you can't be wishy-washy when you're talking to people or they're going to see right through that and they're not going to feel comfortable going with you and they're going to just, they're not going to feel like, you know, they're just going to feel like, like, I don't know, like you're not really that reliable if you're kind of wishy-washy and that, you know, it just, 
you have to have your confidence has to be spot on. It has to be in check when you're talking to people because people can feel that. When you're talking to someone, even if you're just private messaging people and it's on the computer, people can tell if you are confident, if you are someone like talking with enthusiasm and that you believe in yourself and the products versus someone who's really kind of iffy about the price and is just wishy-washy about this whole thing in general. It just, it does shine through on the other end, whether you think it does or not. So the confidence piece, guys, really was a strength of mine right from the beginning. I never worried about reaching out to people and thinking I was going to bother them or annoy them. I truly thought that I was helping people because, like I said, I was 35 pounds heavier. And now it's like, if I need help, I know that there are other people, especially moms out there, that need this help. So I never, ever worry about getting people upset or worrying about what they might say back to me. I was truly 150% in full belief in confidence in these things. And I thought that they were the best out there and I knew that they worked. And so when I talked to people, I, I, you, could, you could hear that. You could see that confidence in me when I was talking to people. I know that if anybody tries these things and tries the 21 day fix and sticks with it and drinks their Shakeology, that they will feel better than they would have ever felt in their entire life. And they probably will be thinking that they wish that they had started this six months ago. So that's how I approached it anytime I was talking to people. Um, so if you guys are struggling with your confidence, I'm sure that you guys have heard that you are a badass book by Jen Sincero, you know, definitely pick that up and get reading it tonight because you can put in all the action you want. You can sit down and you can work your butt off all day and night on this business. And if you don't have that confidence and that belief in yourself, it's not going to happen. Like you are really going to struggle and you're going to wonder why things are not taking off to the next level for you. So pick up that book if you haven't read it already. If you need help in that area, it's an awesome book. Um, it's helped out a lot of the coaches on my team and it really is an easy read. Um, all right, so I had that strong why right from the beginning too, right? So, you know, they always say, you know, your why should make you cry. And so for me, it definitely did. I mean, when I would sit back and I would think about having to leave the kids after being home with them now already and really doing my dream of what I always wanted to do and leave them and go back to my teaching career, I mean, that was enough, guys, to make me want to throw up. Like, it was just... I mean, my why for this was, was right there, right from the beginning of this. You know, I never questioned why I was in this. It was like, I need to stay home with the kids. Something has got to work. This is my last hurrah. So what is your why, guys? You know, really stop and think about it for a second. You know, what is your why? Is it going to be strong enough to take you through the tough times? Like, legitimately, there are going to be tough times. <laughs> Trust me, I've been through it. Is it going to be strong enough to take you through those tough times, right? When you are getting a ton of no's and you're getting discouraged, is your why strong enough to keep your head in the game every single day, no matter what? What are you fighting for, guys? So stop and think about that for a second. You know, why are you in this? Why are you on this call right now? What are you fighting for? You know, that desire for this to work, um, that desire to want to create the best life possible for you and your family, that has to trump anything else that happens in your life. Because life is going to happen. Things are going to happen. There's going to be tough times and discouraging times. And if you don't have that strong emotional connection to a why, you're most likely probably going to just quit. That's what's going to happen. So you, I challenge you guys that if you're not really sure why you're here, to spend some time, you know, over the weekend or even talking to your client coach and coming up with like a really meaningful why. So that way you will stay in this no matter what and you'll have a reason to keep pushing. Because when those tough times come, guys, because they will, it's just life, it's with anything. If you have that really strong why, you know, dangling here the whole time, you're going to be willing to keep going up this hill towards it and you're not going to stop. You know, you might slow down a little bit, but you're going to keep going towards it until you reach it right? Whereas if you don't really know why you're in this and you're kind of like, I mean, I hope it works out. I, you know, I'm kind of hoping that I, you know, maybe can go part time with my hours, whatever. It's just too wishy-washy. So you need to be really specific with it. So that was something that I had right 
from the beginning. Um, it has to trump everything, guys. It has to trump it all, no matter what's going on. Um, and this is really, guys, it's no walk in the park for me. You know, sometimes people say, oh, you make it look so easy. Guys, I'm freaking exhausted all the time. <laughs> like, all the time. This is why I have my coffee. Oh, well, I got to take a sip. <laughs> I'm exhausted all the time. But you know what, guys? It's all been so worth it. It's totally worth it. So this is not any easier for me. I haven't gotten any luckier than anybody else in this business. I just went after it and went all in. You know, it's funny because Nick and I, we used to put the kids to bed at like 8 o'clock at night, you know? And then we would sit around on the couch all night long and just, I'd flop under the blankets, I'd put on Walking Dead, we'd sit there and just watch our shows all night. I'd scroll on Facebook looking at everybody else's life and like their babies and their weddings and their vacations. Um, and then I'd go to bed at like 10 and then I'd repeat the whole thing the next day. And now that I am doing this, I don't do that anymore, right? So I needed to, this to work really fast. I needed this to work fast. I couldn't mess around. I couldn't tiptoe in and put one toe in and test the waters. I had to jump all in. So that's why I work, you know, every single night until 1230 at night. You know, I put the kids to bed and I don't really watch TV anymore now. You know, I, I work on this business. I build this business until 1230. We have our date night on Saturday nights, whether it's here or we go out. But I, that's when my business hours are. So I gave up all that other stuff. Um, and set specific business hours, and I was really focused during them. So if you don't have business hours yet, just look at your schedule, and I tell my team, just be realistic with it, like really be realistic with what's gonna work for you and your family, and just pencil it in when you can really sit down and stay focused on building this business. It makes a huge difference versus just kind of having your head in the phone, like on and off all day long. Then you're not really giving 100% attention to anything that's going on. So you know, sit down, make sure you have your business hours and, um, and stick with it and be focused and disciplined during that time. So that's when I did all my work. I would, you know, the kids would go down for their naps. And actually when Kirsten was little, I'd bring her down the bouncy seat. I'd get my workout done real quick. Then I'd put her down for a nap. I'd get some inviting done, do my follow-ups. And then every single night, once they went to bed, like I said, I'd be up from eight 30 till 1230. Um, and I just literally just mastered the three vital behaviors. Like I really did. I just, when people said invite, 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 I mean, I invited like 30 people instead of three to five, like they recommend, you know, it was, I always did like quadruple of what was recommended, but it was always still the three vital behaviors. And you know, it's really hard too sometimes because when you're in this business, right, you start to look around at all these other coaches and you see what they're doing. And then you think that you need to be doing that, or maybe you should try this. Don't do it. It's the, don't do it. It's just going to get you sidetracked and, and you're not going to be focused anymore on what's going to grow your business. And talking to people is the only thing that's going to grow your business, period. That's it. It is simply going out, talking to people. It's not creating a workout video. It's not creating a video and spending an hour editing it. It's not the pretty picture that you might see on Canva or PicMonkey. It's none of that baloney. It's behind the scenes, talking to people. That is the most important thing that you can do. Um, and so when you talk to people too, you have to be thinking and kind of, you know, picture that, you know, by you not talking to them, you really are doing them a disservice. That's really how I feel and that's what I believe. And I think that who am I to keep all of this awesome information from them? You know, that's not my decision to decide if this is for them or not, right? That's up to them. So I present this to everyone and anyone. And then it's up to them what they do with it after that. So that's how you should look at it. Um, I made sacrifices, right? Because anytime, we all know this, anytime you're looking to change something in your life, right? Or accomplish something in your life different from what is going on now. With that obviously comes temporary sacrifices. But it's just temporary sacrifices, guys. And you don't need to give up things that you love completely. But I'm sure that there are some things that you can cut back. So for me, you know, I wasn't going to bed at 10 o'clock every night. You know, I was staying up until 1230. So I was getting less sleep. I cut out my TV. I cut out any games on my phone. I cut out scrolling on Facebook. Basically anything that was going to prevent me from moving forward in this, I got rid of because I had no time to mess around with this. So think about, you know, 
some of the things that maybe you could cut back on that you don't need, like you might not need all that TV. You know, maybe you love watching TV. That's okay. But do you really need to watch all that TV? I also cut out, um, I stopped my news feed thing. So I don't have, I can't see when they post anymore. That's why I don't really like and comment on many people's things. Unless I specifically have my uh, people that I'm trying to build relationships with, I specifically go to their wall. But all I have now is like a quote that comes up. It's some kind of motivational quote. So that way when I sit down to do my work, I'm not tempted to be like, hey, what's going on today over down here? Let's just keep scrolling. And the next thing you know, it's been a half an hour, right? Wasted of just scrolling. That could have been like 35 invites that I could have done just then. So I got rid of all that stuff. Um, literally like I just I was dead serious about this work and so anything that would drag me down or slow me down it was like it's got to go and it's going now so I did that and honestly what really helped me too was at the very beginning of becoming a coach I think I was probably like I don't know five or six weeks in maybe I stumbled across Scotty Hobbs his video sacrifices so if you guys haven't checked that out yet if you're you know, if you're like me and you like, you are like hell bent on making this work and you're dead serious about building a business, then I would highly recommend watching his sacrifices video that he made right on YouTube. So, you know, I just listened to it and it just hit home for me for some reason. And I just was like, this is it. Like I am going all in, all in. At that time I was doing probably like two hours a night and that's when I upped it to like four hours a night to work on this business. Um, so I wasn't doing anything special guys when I worked when I sit down to do my work. I'm literally it, it's pretty boring I'm not doing anything fancy schmancy anything different. I mean, I literally just have become a master of the three vital behaviors um, and I just invited every single day. I would do my personal development. I drank my Shakeology I did my workout. I made sure to post on social media every single day and I was consistent with that, you know Consistency really is key. This isn't the, uh, the kind of business where you can show up for like a couple days and then take off like five days and then show up for two. You know, you, you have to be there every single day in order for people to take you seriously and know that you're reliable. So it'd be like if you were driving to work every single day, right? Like I used to drive by this Dunkin' Donuts on my way to my teaching job every day and I used to always go there. I have like a Dunkin' Donuts addiction. That's <laughs> so bad. And I would drive there and I would always go in, right? And I'd get my coffee and I'd go to my, my job. Imagine if like all of a sudden one day you're driving by your coffee shop that you go to and there's like a closed like sign or the, the light shut off or the shades down. And you're like, what the heck is going on? I just was coming here like every day for the past week. Why are they all of a sudden like not here? And then you drove by it. So you went to a different one, right? You'd go to a different Dunkin' Donuts or Starbucks. And then the next day you drive by and you're like, Wow, it's weird. It's still not open. All right, so I'll just go to this other one then, I guess. And then the third day you drive by and the lights are on, and you're like, what the heck? And it's just kind of like this, and you notice this weird, inconsistent pattern. You're going to eventually just stop going there because you're going to be like, I never know if that place is open or not. It's exactly the same thing, guys, with your business when you are posting on social media. Even if you don't get any likes, even if you don't get any comments, people are watching you and they are reading. I swear to God, every single post that you put up and they are doing that and watching you for a good six months to a year before they decide if they want to join you. And they are doing that because they want to see if you're serious about this and if you're consistent with this and if you're someone that is reliable. So choose to show up on social media every single day and provide value for someone. That's like your goal as a coach to do that every single day, no matter what. So I was consistent with those things, guys. Every single day for the past 22 months, I didn't get lucky. Like I said, this isn't any easier for me than it is for you guys. I was just consistent with those things. You know, I remember taking Keith Callahan's Coach Basics, and he was like, these are the vital behaviors. These are what you need to do to build a business. And I saw where he was, and I was like, okay, well, I don't like to overthink things anyway. So I'm like, let's just do the vital behaviors and do them every day. And whatever he says is going to happen if I just do that. <laughs> so that's what I did. So you guys should do that too. Don't try to like reinvent the wheel and try to do all this crazy stuff. Just stick with what works, which is the vital behaviors and talking to people. I also never took no for an answer when I talked to people. So you know how like if you're talking to people and you're inviting them to a challenge group and they're like, oh, no thanks, I'm not interested. I never was like, that's all right. Hope you have a great night. I always 
dug deeper with them because I learned that most people say no because they just don't really understand um, what it is that you're actually even asking them. So they need you to kind of explain things better. So when somebody tells me no, I usually just come back at them and just say, hey, you know, if you don't mind me asking, what makes you not interested at this time? Maybe I can help you better understand it. Is it, you know, a time concern? Is it a financial concern? Maybe a motivational concern? And based on what they say, I talk about it and explain more in detail to them. So if they say to me, I just don't have any time, like I literally have no time to do anything, then I go and I talk about, all right, well, you got to eat, right? So let's talk about the nutrition plan. Let's talk about how Shakeology can help you. And just so you know, guys, I tell them, you know, the workouts are only 30 minutes. And if you can't fit that in, there's even some that are only 10 minutes. And if you really can't fit in that, then I have a lot of people that just focus on their nutrition plan and they stay in our challenge groups for support. And then when their schedule allows, they start incorporating in the workouts. So that's how I approach that part. Um, if someone tells me that it's a motivation concern and, you know, I've tried so many things, I always, you know, I just keep failing. I don't know what the heck is going on. I don't want to try anything else. That's when I really talk about the support from the challenge groups and how that was the key for helping me lose the 35 pounds too. And I always relate it back to myself and my story. And I talk that up a lot. And then if someone says it's a financial concern, that's when I always talk about the coaching opportunity. And I always tell them that, you know, there's a business opportunity that comes along with this. So, you know, you can do this. You can help your friends get involved with you, invite them along. And, and I talk about that with them. I even just mentioned just quickly, you know, if you have just two or three friends, it'll help really offset the cost, you know, your cost. So you can get your, your stuff for free. So I always, I, I've just found from experience that never just taking no for an answer and just always digging a little bit deeper. I've never had anybody give me a hard time when I've asked them why they've said no because of the way that I've worded it. Um, and I really just want to help them understand it better because sometimes it's confusing for people. Um, so that's what I did. And then I also knew guys that I had to make this work, right? Like I said to you before, guys, there was no plan B for me. Like there was no, Hey, if this doesn't work out, I'll just go back to my teaching career. It was like, this has to work. Um, and this, this definitely has to work. So I wholeheartedly guys, knew right from the beginning that this was going to work for me. Like I just, I knew it. Like I had that belief. I had that confidence um, that any of you guys can have. You guys can all have that too. Anyone here can do this. Um, you just have to decide to do it. That's all it is. It's just a simple shift in your mindset and the decision that you can do it with that belief and that confidence and you can do it. And guys, I was also really desperate to make this work. You know, I, I was really desperate. You heard my situation and my story of where we were in at the beginning of my call tonight. So I was like in pure desperation mode <laughs> to make this work. So decide right now, guys, you know, just be honest with yourself and decide if you want this to be a hobby or a business. Do you want this to be a hobby or a business? And then decide and commit to it because however you decide to treat this is how you will be rewarded. So just be honest with yourself and there's no right or wrong answer. Everybody's in this for different reasons. It's okay if this is just a hobby or if you wanna make this more, just be honest with yourself, right? And be realistic. And then ask yourself too, are you guys truly happy with where you are right now in your life? Like right now with where you are in your life, are you truly happy? And would you be happy doing that for the rest of your life until the day you retire. And for some of the people on my team, they are, they're truly happy with that. And if that's you guys, that's awesome. Then you're doing the right thing in life because that's what it's supposed to be like. You're supposed to be doing something that you truly love, that you're passionate about, and that gets you excited in the morning when you wake up. So if that's the case, then keep doing what you're doing. But if it's not, then this is your chance, guys. This is your chance and the vehicle that can change all that for you guys. So that's the truth, guys, is that your success in this business, honest to God, boils down to mindset, confidence, belief, and followed up with action. Like I said, that's the key part there. You need to have the action. You know, you can have all the belief in the world that you're going to do this, but if you're not putting in the action every day, then the belief does you no good. So did I have naysayers along the way, guys? Think about that, right? Did I have naysayers along the way? Were my biggest critics, guys? Sometimes my family, 
my closest friends? Absolutely, guys. It's just what happens, right? But that made me guys want to work even harder, to be honest. It did. I could not wait to show them how things in our life were going to change. So that actually fueled my fire. Um, and so don't listen to anybody who may be giving you a tough time. Don't listen to anybody who's trying to discourage you. They're not in control of your future, guys, right? You remember that. There's only one person in control of your future and the way that your life pans out, and that is you. Everybody has the same choice every single day with every single thing that's thrown at you, and it's all up to you with what you decide to do with it and how you handle certain situations. So don't let them slow you down or stop you from going after something that you love or a big dream that you have. Just go for it. So I also feel too that along my journey, I feel like I really was a sponge, right? And so I recommend this, you know, I, I really was a sponge to anything, any personal development, anything I could get my hands on that would help me become a better leader to the team, a better coach that would help my team and other coaches become better. So I literally, any, any audible, any um, audio tape, YouTube video, I mean, you name it, I was reading it, I was watching it. Even to this day, guys, even though I know what to do and I know all the answers, I will still listen to calls from all these other coaches over and over and over again. And so it's like ingrained into my brain. <laughs> um, and so I challenge you guys to do that too because you can never have enough personal development. And if you want things to grow and you want your team to grow and you want your business to grow, then you have to be willing to grow yourself. So when you look at all these other top leaders in the company, right, you know, don't, don't think that you can't get there. Don't think that they had, had it any easier, that they were luckier. I never did that, guys. When I came in, I actually, I saw all, I saw all these people, like Elizabeth Harkey, Keith Callahan, you know, the top leaders in the company, all these other people. And I always just put a positive spin on it. So I recommend that you guys do that too. I was never intimidated by those people with what they were accomplishing. Instead, when I saw what they were doing with their life and how this was the opportunity that did that, I was like, yes, this is awesome. If they can do it, like I can do it. That's where I need to be and that is where I'm going. And so putting that positive spin on it, guys, and realizing that there are people here paving the way for you, showing you that this is possible and you can do it too. Like anybody can do this. Literally, I truly believe that anybody can do this if they apply themselves and they go the distance and they keep a long-term vision. So I always did that when I looked at the top leaders in the company. I learned from them. I would watch YouTube videos from them, anything that I could do to become better. I'm always looking for ways to become better because your learning is never done in this, in this career. It's just not in this business. You have to continue to learn and grow and develop as your team grows. Um, and so finally, guys, after doing all those things, I told you, right, for 22 months, right, showing up when I didn't feel like it, showing up when I felt sick, showing up when I just wanted to go to bed, showing up when my kids were waking up throughout the night, even though I was going to bed at 1230 and they were up for the day and still are at 530 or 6 on the dot every single day. Finally, I slowly started to see this compound effect happen that you hear. <laughs> right? You hear people talk about the compound effect and how just stay the course, do the three vitals, you know, blah, blah, blah. Finally, guys, I was watching it slowly start to pay off. And so it was at month seven, when I was seven months in, what I was earning with Beachbody was exceeding my teacher salary when I left my teaching career after eight years with a master's. So I was like, okay, this is, this is actually working. This is good. Keep doing what you're doing. And then it was, you know, one year in, that's where I was earning six figures. And then at 15 months in, we were able to totally pay off all of our credit card debt, the $35,000 that we had on our credit cards. I was finally able to pay it off and be done with it. And then ever since then, now, you know, I'm out earning my husband and we are actually building a growing savings account, which is crazy for us because we've never had that. Like I mentioned before, we were always going into the negatives every single month. And now, next year, guys, we're going to be moving to Hawaii for a year, and we're going to be bringing my parents with us. And we have all these things on the line that, and all these dreams that we are going to have come true. And you know what, guys? They haven't happened yet, but the thing is, I know they're going to happen. So that's that whole belief thing. Like, even though things haven't happened to you yet, do you know that they're going to happen? Like, really, truly know and believe it, because I do. 
and I have a vision for how I want to live the rest of my life with the family and it hasn't happened yet, but it's going to happen in baby steps along the way, right? So do you know where you're going with this? Do you have that belief that it takes to be able to create that life that you guys always want? Things take time, guys. Like things really take time. Not six months, not one year, you know, like show me your five-year plan, guys. Show me your five-year plan and then go for it. People think way too short-term with this business. And I've actually gotten like some of my top leaders on my team were coaches who literally watched me for an entire year. They never liked a post, never commented on a post. And then finally, after one whole year of them watching me, seeing that I was reliable, I was consistent, I meant business with this, and that I was succeeding with it, they were like, maybe it's my time. And they reached out to me. So you have got to think long-term. You're building a business, guys. Nothing happens overnight. Like You're not gonna see crazy quick success you know, within like a month or two. You have to think long-term, building a business, and it takes time. And so before becoming a coach, guys, right, if I had looked back on my life, I could have honestly had said that things were good. I was living a good life. Things were going good. But what I realized is I wasn't living the best life. And that's what one of the things that becoming a coach has really done for me. It's got me to see that I was just settling before for just the good life. When really everyone is deserving of the best life. You guys deserve the best life possible. And I don't care where you are right now in your life. I don't care how good things are for some of you right now or for all of you right now. Things can always be better. That's really the truth. Things can always be better and you can always make things better. And so that's what I realized when I became a coach is that, you know what? This is my one chance at life, right? This is our one shot. And our family deserves to have the best life possible. And I want to be able to create the best life possible for my kids. So you guys can do this too, but you have to believe in yourself. You have to believe and you have to believe that it'll happen and keep a long-term vision. And so before I close out, I like to end my calls with this analogy um, where I like to talk about the four by one relay. So I don't know if you guys ever ran track and field, but I always ran the four by one, it was like my race. I was really good at it in high school and college. And you know, everyone lines up around the track and the first person has the baton, right? And then the gun goes off, it's like, right? And the first person runs as fast as they can and they hand the baton to the next person and the next person runs and they hand the baton and it goes all the way around the track, right? Well, that baton, guys, is this business opportunity. And you can run as fast or as slow as you want, but you gotta run your race and you gotta pass off the baton, right? So don't look around. You keep your head down when you run that race. You run your race, you run your speed, you run your best race, and then you hand that baton off. And that baton, guys, is the business opportunity. So I hope that you guys choose to run your race, keep your head down, do your best race, and I hope that you guys pass that baton off to people and that person will be one more person to join your team. And then eventually, guys, that person will pass the baton and you'll keep passing the baton and that will be your incredible team that you guys will form over time. So anyways, that's my spiel. So if anybody has any questions about any of that, um, let me know. Just remember, guys, it's your own race. You run your own race and you don't stop. <laughs> Kathy, thank you so much. I love <laughs> you. You're welcome. I love like your um, little like outburst of laughter when you're talking. It's like wonderful. <laughs> I'll never forget the video that you posted a couple months ago when you paid off that credit card. And I think that's something that really sticks out to me. Um, she made this amazing post, like they called their credit card company and she was like paying it off like and recorded it. And like, it was like one of those tearjerker moments because I remember <laughs> when I first like heard her story that she was in a lot of debt and like just seeing that for them was so crazy. So, um, when you mentioned that, like that really, like that came right back to my head was that, that post. Yeah. It's so crazy. I can't even believe all that. It's like, whoa, <laughs> it's like a total whirlwind. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. You guys, if you have any questions for her about anything, um, unmute and ask. She's, we have a couple more minutes if you guys want to, she's yeah. Take your time. 
ask any questions that you have. This is a good person to ask. Yeah, I'll be honest. I don't candy coat things, you know, because I want people to succeed. So I just will, I'll lay it on the line for you guys, whatever you want to hear. <laughs> don't be shy. <laughs> and guys, too, before I let you guys go, like, you know, you hear all these coaches, you know, tell you their stories and their journeys and everything. And obviously I move like ridiculously fast, you know. And the one thing that I always like to tell everybody that I talk to is that you don't need to go crazy balls to the wall like I did to have success in this business. I mean, you can build a successful business doing one solid focused hour a day. Like that's what I tell my coaches. You know, I tell them that if you can at least dedicate one solid focused hour, even if you split it up and do like a half an hour in the morning or a half an hour at night, you can still build a really successful business. It will just take you longer. That's really all it is. So the only way to fail at this, guys, is if you choose to quit or do nothing. That's really the only way. So go your own pace. Like, do what works for you and be realistic with it. I mean, obviously, the more time you spend on it and the more people you talk to, the faster you're going to grow. But you got to do what works for you and your family. And everybody has different schedules and different things happening in their lives. So you want this most of all to be fun and you want it to be exciting and you don't want it to seem like a chore. So it should be like naturally fit into your day just as if you do your workout every single day. So it's the same thing with this business. It should just fit in naturally. It'd be something that you look forward to doing and it shouldn't be like, oh God, now I need to invite. You know what I mean? Like it should be something fun that like you're passionate about. So just remember that, you know, don't look around at other people. Don't think like, oh, now I got to work four hours and stay up till 1230 at night. You don't have to do that. If you want to move fast, yeah, then put in more time. But you can still build a successful business. Like I said, doing one hour a day consistently over time by hitting success club 10. Like I tell all my coaches on my team, if you are looking to build a business, I tell them focus on success club 10 and focus on bringing on two to three new active coaches every single month. And if you can do that, then you will build a successful six figure income earning business. If that's what you want. Um, does anybody have any questions? I have one for her. If you guys aren't going to ask. <laughs> ask it on behalf of all of you because I know you're probably all thinking it <laughs> um, you a lot of my coaches right now um, a lot of coaches on this team are pushing for diamond um, they're either a summit qualifications or two that's just the next step on the totem pole that's what they're excited about I know you did it very fast um, she did it in 11 days <laughs> <laughs> So if you have any tips for them, um, cause I know that like a, it's one of those ranks that a lot of people overthink, um, yeah, totally. so tips for them in regards to anybody, I guess, going for their first or second rank advancement. Yeah, definitely don't overthink it guys. It's actually, it's really not difficult to do it. And this is what I did. I just, like I said, I, I was inviting like crazy, right? So I wasn't just like messaging and reaching out to three to five people every day. I was talking to like 30 people every day. So I, it was very easy for me to get eight people signed up. Now, within those eight people that I had, I mean, that's like the bare bones minimum to have diamond. Um, you know, you always want to obviously make sure you have buffer. But what I did to get my emeralds was I, I had heard that you should sign up your spouse, right? Because it's like an investment property for you. And that it would help me earn more income later on for doing no extra work, right? So I signed up Nick right away and I put him on my weak leg. So I always made sure I got myself to success club and I put two people under him and he became an emerald. And then, um, I had a friend from college. She was actually the one who introduced me to P90X like seven years ago. That was my first experience with Beefbody. So I had kind of already planted the seed in her head when I was <clears throat> going through that whole three month skeptical period. I kind of knew I was going to do this. And even though like Nick was like, this is so stupid. Like you're not going to make any money with this. It's a scam. I kind of knew that I was going to still do it. So I kind of planted the bug in her ear and was like, listen, we're going to do this. Like we're going to sign up. We're going to be beach body coaches. And I remember her being like, what the heck is that? I'm like, I don't know, but it's going to be awesome. It's going to change our lives and we're going to do it together. And so <laughs> when I signed up, she had already told me she was going to sign up. So she signed up right away and she was all in and she was actually one of my first diamonds on the team so she got herself to emerald but I just really just recommend I mean every single person that you sign up it really is just talking to more people um, so anybody that I have signed up as a challenger 
first of all, I enroll everybody as a coach. That's just what I do because um, I, I do give them the option. But when they hear that they can save money going forward, if they like the Shakeology, they want to go in as a coach. So I do that because, number one, um, I like saving them money. I just feel like that's the right thing to do. Um, it also, I also do it in hopes that down the road they'll want to become an active coach, and they're already in the system as a coach. So there you go. That's easy. And it also builds your organization up. So I put everybody in as coaches and very few people in as customers. So that's another reason why I was able to get those people already signed up so quickly. And then every single person who I had signed up as a challenger, I would just ask them, like, hey, like, do you think that you might ever want to become a coach on the team? You can, get your, you can get your cost covered. You can get your product for free. Like, are you interested in hearing about that? So I, everybody that I sign up, I always ask that, to, ask that to them. So you can go back to all your people and, and say the exact same thing. Um, and then it really is just asking people every day, like just as, it, just as how you invite to, the, to your challenge groups, like when I started to notice like the big shift with like bringing on active coaches, like a lot of them every month, was when I started focusing on consistently every day, like talking to at least five people about the business opportunity. And I found what worked over time is just being really simple. So I literally just message people and say, you know, and I don't just take any like Tom, Dick, and Harry on at this point. Like I want like people who I think will really be good and build a business. So I'll message them and I'll just say like, hey, blah, blah, blah. How's it going? Like a quick personal connection with how I know them or something that I saw them post. And then I'll say, hey, listen, you know, I was thinking about it. I really think you'd make an awesome coach on the team. Have you ever thought about hearing more about what I do? That's it. Like I simply just say that. And then most of the time they're like, actually I have, you know, can you tell me more about it? And then I just talk to them like a normal conversation that you would have with someone if you were sitting in your house, like pretend that you're talking to your friend about what you do and why you like it so much. And that's, that's all I do. Like, I don't go into like all this detail about like what coaching is and success club and weak leg, right? Like I don't go into any of that. I just tell them that I think that they would make an awesome coach or that I think that you're really motivating and you're so inspiring. Like you're doing exactly what I'm doing. You know, why don't you check it out? So I'll approach it that way. So I feel like if you just can make it part of your daily routine, like I tell all my coaches on my team, like, like it needs to be when you sit down to invite, like it shouldn't just be all invites to your challenge group. You know, you should be having, like I said, at least one person every single day that you're inviting to the business opportunity and take advantage of like, I don't know if like Kelsey runs like sneak peeks or webinars or coach blitzes or whatever, because I know when you become, uh, when you're a coach and you're newer, like when I was newer, I was really nervous to talk about this business opportunity. But the one thing that saved me big time was when Liz was always doing the coach sneak peeks twice a month. I mean, I would plug in 30 to 35 people. <laughs> I would invite like that many people and I would plug them in because I was like, I don't really know how to explain this to people, or, but you know, she's doing awesome and she does a great job going the sneak peek. <laughs> so take advantage of all that stuff because that's really helpful and, it, and it's already all done for you. So all you have to do is just invite people to it. So I don't know if that helped. Oh, good. You have a live webinar tomorrow night. So, I mean, I tell all my coaches whenever we do like a live webinar or a coaching blitz to invite at least 10 people to it. Cause you figure usually like if I invite 10 people to like a co coaching blitz or something like that, I might have like one person sign up to become an active coach. Maybe two if I'm lucky. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. That's and, oh, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. You go. I was just going to say, like, and it really is one of those things, too, where you do become more confident in it the more you just talk about it. It really is just, like, getting out there and getting comfortable. You know what I mean? The first time, it's, like, so scary. But then the more you do it, the more confident you become, and then the more competent you become. And then it's just a cycle, you know? And then it builds up your confidence, and then that's when the momentum and, you know, starts to get going for you. Yeah, and I don't think there's ever been any coach that has come into this business and said it wasn't scary at first because, like, yeah. it was terrifying for me at first, too. <laughs> yeah, it's like you're messaging these people, you know what I mean? You're talking to these people. It is. It's totally out of your comfort zone. It really is. <laughs> um, any more questions? We have time for one more if anybody has one. No? 
No questions. Wow. <laughs> for being shy. <laughs> it's okay. And so they're always talking. <laughs> Um, All right. If you guys ever have any questions, you can always send me a private message or anything like that too. I'm happy to help anybody out. Awesome. Yeah, Kathy, thank you so much for coming on here. I know that this helped a lot of us, um, especially me. It's always good to hear you speak. I love it. Um, oh, thanks so much. You'll have to do one for our team too soon. Yeah, I would love to. Um, I'll see you soon at Summit. I'm yes, so I can't wait. How many of you guys are going to Summit? Oh, good. Awesome. It's going to be awesome. It's so much fun. I'm getting so pumped for that. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. It's such a life-changing experience. For sure. It really is. It really is. I really feel that, like, if every coach could get there, you know, just they would never, ever, never think about quitting. <laughs> I know. That's how I felt last year. I was like, well, I'm going nowhere. I was like, I'm <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> awesome. All right, guys. Well, tomorrow we have um, a live coach opportunity webinar at 730. So like Kathy said, take advantage of these things. Um, I will be doing it. I have a PowerPoint ready and ready to tell everybody about it. So if you have people in mind, I, I challenge you to invite five to 10 people and get them on that call. So that'll help with um, everybody who's shooting for rank advancements, um, especially the next week before summit. So um, yeah. Um, thanks for coming on, guys, and I will see you guys next week. Thanks again, Kathy. No problem. Have a great night, guys. Bye.